Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I've had the honor of being the president of the North American Menopause Society through 2017, and I sit on the Board of Trustees, and I'm joined by one of our other members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stephanie Fabian. Tell everybody who you are. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephanie Fabian, and I am the Director of the Office of Women's Health at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm an internist. So I'm a woman in your office, and uh, menopausal, terrible hot flashes, really fearful about breast cancer. So for women like me who are sitting out there, what are you going to tell me? First of all, I understand your concern about breast cancer risk, and it's a very common concern that women have. But it's important to put that risk in perspective. So if you sitting across from me have a uterus, then you need to take the combination of estrogen plus a progestogen to protect that uterine lining from growing too much. And it may be that that progestogen component is associated with a slight increased risk of breast cancer. And when we say slight, we're talking about one extra case per thousand women after about three years of treatment. And put it even further into perspective, uh, that's about the same as between one and two glasses of wine per night about the same as being obese and about the same as being inactive. So there's lifestyle factors that are yeah, equivalent. Yeah, so let, let's just stop and talk about those lifestyle factors because often they're not put into context at all and women will feel that there's nothing that they can do to decrease their risks. So in fact, these lifestyle modifiers can make a difference. Absolutely, women have a lot more control over their risk than they think they do and a lot of these lifestyle factors are modifiable. So obesity, inactivity, alcohol use are all things that we can modify. And so it's important when we're thinking about hormone therapy to just put that in the context of the right. rest of your life. So let's say I have family history, but I know I'm, I'm not BRCA positive. So just a woman who perceives herself at increased risk and it has a more exaggerated fear um, and is so anti-hormone because her belief is that family history means inevitability and if I add on estrogen then I'm just really speeding that up. Right, well a family history may be associated with an increased risk of breast cancer but the good news is that it doesn't appear to be additive if we put hormone therapy on there it doesn't appear to increase the risk further and while we may have some discussions about how long you would take that hormone therapy and maybe you just take it for as long as you need it for the first few years after menopause because there may be some risk associated with longer term use. But again, we still have to put this in perspective and the risk does not appear to be additive on top of that family history risk. And so for women who are really bothered by these symptoms right around menopause, it's still reasonable to consider hormone therapy after discussing those risks. And now what if I'm a woman who's had a hysterectomy now that's a little bit different situation. If you've had a hysterectomy, you don't have a uterus anymore, you just are taking estrogen alone without the progestogen, the risk of breast cancer does not appear to be increased at all. There was a trend even toward a decreased risk of breast cancer after seven years of treatment, although um, that, didn't, that wasn't what we call significant, but the good news is there doesn't appear to be an increased risk associated with estrogen only. And the North American Menopause Society came up with their new hormone position statement and they do say something about the next category of women. What if I'm a woman who's BRCA positive mm -hmm. but has not had anything happen to me yet, but I'm BRCA positive? So if you have that BRCA gene mutation, you're at significantly increased risk for breast cancer. But if you have not had breast cancer and if you've had your ovaries removed to reduce your risk, it does not, there does not appear to be an increased risk associated with taking hormone therapy, at least about till the age of natural menopause, mm -hmm. 50, 51. Um, it doesn't appear to increase the risk further. So you're already at higher risk, but the hormone therapy until the age of menopause doesn't appear to increase that further. I think what I'm hearing you say, and I think representing patients and what patients need to hear out there is that they've got to leave that fear at the doorstep and have the conversation because I think the fear of breast cancer keeps them from even coming in to see you to have a conversation and makes women feel like there's nothing they can do with their hot flashes and night sweats. That's absolutely true. It's an individualized discussion and it's important to go in and talk with your healthcare provider to make sure that you understand all of these risks and benefits in context. Thank you so much for being here with us, Stephanie. Thank you.